The Melbourne Underground Film Festival, note the acronym, is a perennial favourite of the discerning filmgoer who likes their films with lots of blood, tits and intravenous drugs, preferably all at the same time. It's proved a fertile starting ground for some top young Australian genre filmmakers, as well as a great way to get incredibly offended. We spoke with festival director, filmmaker and troublemaker Richard Wollstonecroft about rubbish Australian films, the real benefits of Hilary Duff movies and why an annual taste of muff is not nearly enough. All right, so last like year or two, we've seen uh, Look Both Ways and The Proposition yeah. and Candy. Yeah. Why is the Australian film industry in a state of emergency? Well, because Candy was rubbish, and Look Both Ways was rubbish, and The Proposition, though, was good, but it was an English film. Uh, Nick Cave, I think, is a great Australian. Uh, I've always been a fan of his music, even though he's sort of an expat, really. And um, I think um, the Australian film industry is definitely still in crisis because I think we still uh, are making a lot of very mediocre films, of which two of you, which you mentioned, Look Both Ways, I thought was an, an atrocious kind of film school kind of animated thing about someone who gets cancer maybe, or he does definitely gets cancer, and it's kind of like got these horrible animated things that look like something out of a textbook film school. This year, one of my favourite films was M4J, which is a... Um, uh, a kind of heroin film, which is totally ignored by the mainstream, I think, and uh, you know, they're lauding this kind of candy thing, which I thought was very kind of dull. And Little Fish was kind of all right, you know, um, but I didn't really believe Kate Blanchett is a heroin addict. I don't think she's ever probably had as much as a joint, you know. <laughs> in her life, no, she's probably had a joint. Well, that wispy look in her eyes, I don't think you get, that comes naturally. I think there's got to be something. That was left going. over from Lord of the Rings. I yeah, I mean, no, right. this, I think Martin, is it Martin Henderson was in there. I think yeah. he was all right. And uh, I like Sam Neill's kind of Graham Kennedy kind of uh, gay gangster type. You know, that was kind of interesting. What's the answer, do you think, from like a grassroots level? I think definitely what what we're doing at Muff and what um, other filmmakers are doing, um, you know, where, you know, you're seeing it done this year with a film like 237, where they're, uh, you know, made a film about youth suicide and um, it's an exploitation film essentially, disguised as an art film. I think we're going to see a real, um, you know, a change hopefully in the next five years within the industry and we'll leave behind this PC, you know, rubbish that we've seen the last 15 years in the industry. Personally, I'd like to see another um, uh, film about a girl going on a journey of self-discovery in the outback. Cause I, I do too, as long as she gets raped and, um, you know, and uh, all, or like a, all week. her friends yeah. get raped or something. That would be very interesting. Um, friends raped as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, that would be very interesting. Um, yeah, I want no more coming of age stories unless there's, there's some kind of rape theme or uh, murder or maybe, you know, I think you should, we need like an Australian I spit on your grave, you know, where the revenge against right. the rapist. That's mine. Where I the woman the first. <laughs> gets her revenge, you see. Yeah, All right, yeah, well, yeah. I'm going to take a bath. Did you see that one? There's one this year that was sort of like that where the man got raped. What was that called again? I saw that. Remember that? No. Yes, Book of Revelations. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Where uh, wow. Tom Long gets raped. And, um, you know, again, cool dark subject matter, badly yeah. done, but, like, yeah. still, the subject matter was it was kind of brave, you know, and, mm. you know, mm. Coconut also over-directed it. I thought, yeah. well, you know, hats off in the sense he's trying something different. You know, this is not your kind of normal film, and and, and the objectification, objectification of men as well as mm. women was an interesting thing to touch on, and, yeah. uh, you know, you got you got to congratulate her for attempting to do that, you know, so. Do you have any sort of regular cinematic interests like can you appreciate you know a dumb stupid popcorn movie oh of course yeah, yeah. i mean i see a lot of ma a mainstream um, cinema um what do you yeah. like what do you what can you sort of what's a guilty pleasure that you shouldn't admit to that will exclusively now oh, wow well, yeah i mean guilty pleasure i mean yeah. mainstream guilty pleasures like a mu give me a musical <laughs> high school musical don't we yeah, like no, musicals no, not that high school much. Musical. i mean i like busby berkeley, berkeley musicals and i mean i love all these classic musicals oh there's um, now okay classic now okay no. you know but no i mean no, down, some of the kids are bring it down a okay yeah. okay okay something lowbrow um i mean i guess it's more the horror stuff but i guess you probably yeah, expect yeah, it of me yeah. um yeah, get away from sort of exploitation. i can get into these girly uh, my girlfriend takes me to these girly kind of teen comedy things with like hillary duff and stuff and i can appreciate these things yeah. you know what i mean okay. um basically because the girls are good looking you know what I mean? And like, what's that? Bring it on? Yes. Yeah. Good perf. Yeah. Good perf. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. Guilty pleasure, still definitely. You know, new, like cheerleaders <laughs> running around and those. You know, definitely. I was having my spanking fantasies there. You know, <laughs> being the strict coach. You know. Very good. <laughs> so uh, you know, that was definitely happening. So yeah, that's definitely a guilty pleasure. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Lee. Yes. 
<laughs> oh, my guilty pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, okay. yeah, I'm not the only one who has to confess this. Here. Come on, this is a two-way street here, boys. Uh, I saw Spice World twice at the cinemas. Spice World? I don't care who knows about it. Oh, I only saw it once. We're going to cover that, brother. Yeah. yeah. I saw Crossroads once for the um, the Britney Spears one. I yeah, saw didn't the, see that. I saw the, the the opening day, the first screening, and it was the cinema was filled with, you know, uh, like 12-year-old girls, and they all sang along, and it made me feel so warm and fuzzy uh-huh. for other reasons than you would think. But, um, uh, but yeah, it was... Uh, uh-huh. No, that, that was that's but I with the film was shit. But, sure. Yeah, but the experience was good. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, moving from Britney Spears into a question about fascism. <laughs> um, I thought it was really interesting. You described yourself as a fascist, but not in the traditional sense, not in the way that. Uh, well, I mean, you know, I could, I've described myself as a transcendental fascist, which is really is a that? theory that I've kind of invented because I, I, I did a university degree in the late 90s after I finished running Hellfire. I just got interested in kind of, uh, I've always kind of been slightly interested in kind of fascist things, but I've never considered myself a racist. So um, I, I was interested in the kind of international fascism that could work just as well within a black country, countries of Africa, as it could within Asian countries or, you know. And uh, for example, when I went to Fiji, I was talking to some Fijians about what they could do. And I was very sympathetic to the coup cause which is, there's another one going on at the moment so okay, well, let's go with. <laughs> you know what I mean and uh, you know uh, viva la Fiji and um, yeah I just I'm, I'm definitely revolutionary but probably of, of the right you know and and um, because I think the left wing is so lame and uh, you know like they go out in the streets and they all are so messily dressed and they scream and yell and they achieve nothing you know and the people who run that country and that of the Western world these people are fascists they're capitalist fascists and if you want to at least begin to achieve something. You've got to speak their language. You have a hundred thousand protests of left-wing people, all dressed with long hair, and they're a completely undisciplined mass of people. If you took ten thousand of those people, you dressed them in a uniform, and you marched them in a military-style march. Now, it didn't matter what you said, the government would fucking respect you because they'd shit themselves because you'd be speaking their fucking language. You don't have to do anything violent at all. I can't see John Butler in a uniform, though. That's the only problem. See, our generation has just been so taught that they cannot consider these kind of things seriously. And, uh, you know, I think it's a real shame, you know. And, um, uh, you know, and that's probably why, you know, this current regime will just continue on and on, you know. I know you wouldn't normally expect to see Muff on the internet, but you can go to this address for more details. Yes, we've got more Muff metaphors than you can poke a stick at, you know, if that's what you're into.